Hi friends, I'm Laura Adams. Thanks for downloading another weekly edition of Money Girl. It's great to have you back. My goal for the show is to make sure you have the information you need to make smart money decisions, have less stress, and live a financially secure, happy life. If you've been enjoying the podcast, I have a quick favor to ask. Please take a moment to go to iTunes and post a short review for the show. That helps new listeners become subscribers and join the Money Girl community as well. I'll put a link to the iTunes page on the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. And as always, that's where you can read a transcript of this show and get links to all the resources that I'm going to mention. Just look for episode number 369 called Four Major Disasters Homeowners and Renters Insurance Won't Cover. So let's get started talking about insurance. Having homeowners or renters insurance is an important part of protecting your personal finances. But just because you have a policy doesn't mean that every potential claim or cost will be covered. Unfortunately, many people don't realize this until after a disaster strikes and it's too late. So in this episode, I'll review what is and isn't covered by home or renter's insurance. You'll learn four major disasters that are surprisingly not covered and what to do to stay safe. Last week, after the strongest earthquake in 25 years hit Northern California, I was chatting about it on the Money Girl Facebook page. I live in San Mateo, about 65 miles south of the Napa epicenter, and actually slept right through it, until people started calling and texting to make sure we were okay. A Facebook follower named Mariella said, I'm so glad I got earthquake insurance because of you. Mariella gets a virtual high five. Sadly, many people without earthquake insurance won't be feeling so grateful when they attempt to make a claim and find out that their damage isn't covered by a typical homeowner's or renter's policy. Before I tell you more about what is not covered by a home policy, let's back up so you understand what is covered. A standard homeowner's policy gives you four main types of coverage. The first is dwelling coverage. This pays to rebuild or repair damage to the structure of your home caused by a covered event, such as a fire, hurricane, hail, lightning, vandalism, or other disaster listed in your policy. The second type of coverage is for contents. This pays to repair or replace your damaged or stolen personal belongings, such as furniture, sporting equipment, and clothes. You're covered anywhere in the world as long as the loss is caused by a covered event. The third type of coverage is liability. This protects you if you're sued because you, family members, or even your pets cause property damage or medical injury on your property or while you're away from home. And the fourth type of coverage is called additional living expenses. This pays you a certain amount if you're temporarily unable to live in your home due to a covered event, such as a fire, lightning strike, or storm. Now, if you're not a homeowner and you rent an apartment, condo, or house, you need renter's insurance. It gives you many of the same protections as homeowner's insurance, except you don't insure the physical dwelling. That's the landlord's responsibility. A standard renter's policy protects you against the same covered disasters as home insurance, such as fire, lightning, storms, and theft. It covers your personal belongings, liability, and additional living expenses if you have to move out while repairs are being made. Renter's insurance is a very inexpensive policy. It only costs about $185 a year on average across the United States. Remember that in the event of a disaster, your landlord might be sympathetic about your damaged or stolen possessions, but he or she isn't obligated to replace them for you. Now that you know what home and renter's insurance generally covers, here are four major disasters that they won't cover. So the first disaster that is not covered by home or renter's insurance are earthquakes. Basic home policies don't cover any earthquake damage to your property or personal belongings. As you can imagine, intense shaking can destroy entire buildings and valuable contents. Now, if fire erupts or broken pipes cause water damage following an earthquake, those damages would be covered by a typical home policy in most states. 
A majority of the world's strongest earthquakes take place on the Pacific coast, from Southern California up to Alaska. But the U.S. Geological Survey says that more than 20 states have experienced measurable earthquake activity in the past 30 years. I've lived in South Carolina and Florida and felt earthquakes in both of those states. You can see a map of the top earthquake states at the U.S. Geologic Survey website, earthquake.usgs.gov. In most states, home insurance companies offer earthquake coverage as a supplement, and premiums vary widely depending on the risk factors where you live. Contact your insurance agent or company to get an earthquake quote. If you live in California, check out the California Earthquake Authority. They have a premium calculator so you can see rates for your area. I'll put a link to that calculator in the show notes on the Money Girl page at quickanddirtytips.com. The second disaster not covered by insurance are floods. While a flood may seem very different from an earthquake, they do have something in common. Remember that neither one of them is covered by a standard home or renter's insurance policy. Don't think that just because you don't live on a river or near the ocean that you'll never experience a flood. According to the federal government's National Flood Insurance Program, nearly 20% of flood claims come from low to moderate risk areas. Flood insurance is issued by the federal government and a few private insurers, but is sold through independent agents or insurance representatives. If you have a mortgage, flood insurance may be required by your lender if you live in a high-risk flood area. Just like with earthquake coverage, premiums for flood insurance vary depending on where you live, but they could be as low as $129 per year. To learn more, visit floodsmart.gov. Disaster number three are sewer backups. Would it be poor taste to say that having a sewer backup really stinks? Not just because it's a health hazard, but because cleaning it up typically isn't covered by a standard home insurance policy. Homeowners are responsible for maintenance of their sewer lines. If you have a sewer backup due to aging pipes, blockages from tree roots, or from excess stormwater runoff, it can ruin floors, walls, electrical systems, and personal belongings. The good news is that you can get an endorsement to your homeowner's policy to cover sewer backups that could cost as little as $50 a year. And the fourth disaster is mold. This is another health hazard that can creep up on you in your home. According to the Insurance Information Institute, there are over 1,000 different species of mold in the United States. It can make you sick, cause allergic reactions, and be really expensive to clean up. But a standard homeowner's policy typically limits coverage for mold or excludes it altogether. Some insurers offer an endorsement to increase your protection against mold. The best way to protect your property and belongings from the risk of various natural disasters is to discuss your potential risk with an insurance company or agent. Ask whether you need specialized coverage beyond what a typical home or renter's policy provides. Get multiple quotes and opinions from different insurance providers. I'll put links to some great carriers and quote aggregators on the Money Girl page at quickanddirtytips.com. Once you've got quotes to compare, weigh the information you're given carefully. Ask about discounts you may qualify for, such as having an alarm system, smoke detectors, or a new roof. Also, remember that maintaining good credit helps reduce the cost of insurance. Read or listen to episode number 331 called What You Should Know About Credit-Based Insurance Scores to learn more. Take the time to review all your insurance at least once a year to make sure you aren't over or underinsured and have the most affordable coverage possible. I'm glad you're listening. Cha-ching! That's all for now. Courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. 